in his 27th year, he's committed his entire professional head coaching career to one university. And boy, everybody here at Radford University, very grateful as he's the all-time winningest coach, seven NCAA tournament berths, most tournament championships in the Big South, most regular season championships. Quite frankly, he is not only the dean of coaches, he is the best coach in the history of this league. And we are underway here tonight from Cup. Under the lights, brooding skies overhead, but the rain's not supposed to start if it comes at all until this one's well in the books. As you have the Longwood Lancers wearing the navy blue with white numbers and letters, they will be defending and attacking from left to right. The Highlanders wearing the home whites with the red numbers from right to left. And here's an entry pass already into Cat Paris. And the Lancers able to take it away. But the Highlanders already on the prowl here in this contest's first minute. And Radford has really been playing extremely well over the last several weeks. Ball is played out. and It'll be a throw in for Longwood. It's Radford team. Three and one in their last four games to outline how well they have played. Longwood going the other direction. They are one and three in their last four. They started the season in the non-conference three and one. But they have found the sledding a little tougher once the Big South schedule got underway. Islanders tonight without their leading goal scorer. As here's a pass here on the left side and Radford coming right back, trying to put some pressure on. Alexis Kiernos had a collision with a teammate in Saturday's matchup at Asheville, a game that Radford won two to one. And so Ben Sarabi saw uh, Kiernos walk out with Coach Sarabi. He decided to uh, let her watch this one here tonight until she's fully recovered. And now the Lancers with the throw in. First time they've really had the ball down here in Radford's end. And as the road team, boy, they would like to get a strike here first, wouldn't they? Just to get them some momentum as this ball is played out. And we're going to have our first set piece already. That ball deflected, I believe, off of Radford's Avery Howe. And first corner kick of the evening. Now Radford's the one who's adept at corner kicks. They are seventh in the country. 101 of them on the season. There's a line drive that was too low and not exactly anywhere near where it needed to be. And the Highlanders have an easy takeaway. Radford running from right to left. Talked to Ben Sarabi a bit before the contest. And he made a great point. When you have two teams from the same state, it does up the ante a little bit. Natural rivalry between Radford and Longwood. And let's be honest too, this Radford team gets everybody's best shot because of the legacy and the standard in which Ben Sarabi has built here. It is, if not their opponent's biggest game, it's definitely one of their biggest games of the year as Paige Olsen running well here on the bottom side. Nice pass to Swain. Amy back out to Page. Amy Swain's been very proficient at scoring this year for Radford. Another giveaway by Longwood, and this will be played out and a throw in for the Highlanders. That was Selena Lynch who got involved in that one. Highlanders in goal, gonna start out Trinity Varis tonight, by the way. She will spell Jordan Phillips. This will be the sixth start for Trinity. She's only allowed two goals. She's made 12 saves. She's 2-0-2. She hasn't been defeated this year. And here's a shot that's over and out to the right off the toe of Lily Short. And it will be a goal kick here for the Longwood netminder, Mary-Kate Levish. There you see Mary-Kate wearing the road yellow goalie togs here tonight. Levish on the season. This will be her 15th start. She's 4-7-3. and three. She's allowed 15 goals. She's made 77 saves. Turnover, and Radford plays it back in, but no shot. Elsewhere for the Lancers, Kirsten Juhas getting the start. Caroline Lidecker 
Elena Palomar, Brooke Bonner, Savannah Knoll, Alex Dinger, Sydney Robertson, Kylie Cox, Sophia Gualiano, Catherine Frost, and we mentioned Levish between the pipes. And here come the Lancers trying to create some space and get a shot in. Nothing through. For Radford, nice to have Katie Oliver back at her midfield spot. Katie O's been out for a little while with an injury. Paige Olson, Helena Wilson had a big game over the weekend. Kat Paris, Kayla Edwards, Lily Short, Selena Lynch, Avery Howe, Caitlin O'Donnell, Amy Swain, and Trinity Veras in goal. Longwood lost to Upstate 3-1 to one over the weekend. Kylie Cox had the goal for the Lancers. And it was one of those games that Upstate really came out as the aggressor and set up some set pieces and kept constant pressure on as he had a good gamble that time by Levish as she came out to play that one. Todd Dyer said goals change games, and when they scored that first goal in the corner kick, we were chasing the rest of the way. He hopes his team doesn't have to deal with that tonight against Radford. And after halftime in that game against Upstate, the Spartans outshot Longwood 12-5. to There you see KDO. See that right thigh? She's got wrapped up. And it's tough to win when you're getting outshot by that much. This Longwood team's had trouble scoring goals. They only have 11 tallies on the season. Hasn't been a problem for Ben Sarabi's club. 27 goals. They've outscored their opponents 27 to 14. And that one's kicked well high of the crossbar. It'll be another play by Levish. We mentioned Kiernos with the five goals. Amy Swain, Cat Paris, each with four. Then Lily Short and Helena Wilson with three. Skylar Prosser has two. June Stevens, he's been a nice addition. She has a couple of goals. And Longwood being led by three different players, Savannah Knoll, Catherine Frost, and Kylie Cox. Each have two tallies on the season. There's a deflection. Ball went right off of Wilson. She kind of felt that one for a second, but now she's running the other way, and we're going to have a foul and a free kick here for the Lancers. Early moments here as the kick was taken by Gualiano. Possession feels about equal so far. Maybe a slight edge to Radford here in the first seven plus minutes. Olsen gonna play this for the Highlanders. Nope, she's gonna drop it. It'll be a Longwood play. Temperatures to start out in the Mid-60s, around 64, 65 degrees. They will drop considerably as the evening goes on. There is a breeze, though, flowing through, which tells you that a front is making its way closer to the New River Valley. We are supposed to be weather-free, though, throughout the duration of this one. There's a nice play in, and Highlanders Lynch recovers. Initial attack by Juhas looked pretty good. KDO on the far side. Defending, They're going to try to bend this around, and it's played out. We're going to have another corner kick here for the Lancers. This will be their second one. First one, not very successful. They're trying to change that around here. That shot is in, and the deflection goes over the net. So good. Chance there created off of the corner. Best chance so far by the Lancers. Melina Wilson had both goals in that matchup against Asheville. It was her first multi goal, goal game of her career. And they all came in the second half. That Radford team 
go behind and hung in there and got the dub. Of course, your top four teams out of the conference will be in the Big South Tournament. Looking at the standings right now, it's Upstate, Campbell, Radford, Gardner, Webb, but Charleston Southern actually tied with Radford and Gardner, Webb at 3-1-1. One, one. Highlanders on the attack, here's Cat doing her dance, the, doing what Cat does out there. Guagliano though met her with the challenge. Here's Wilson who's been on a goal scoring streak, trying to get free. Good tackle there, and the ball's played out by the Lancers. Well, so far, Longwood matching Radford's physicality, and now they are running from left to right. Trying to get by Katie, and Oliver would not allow it. Katie Oliver, so fast when she runs the full length of the pitch, she's also a pretty good defender. Olsen trying to run that one down, can't get there, but it had to be played out by the Lancers, Carolyn Lidecker. But what's really neat when we just went over the starting, or the head coaches before the starting lineups, it's just nice to have two coaches who are that into their programs and who just love their schools and are there because that's where they want to be. Both coaches, I'm sure, have had plenty. I know Ben Sarabi has. They've had plenty of opportunities as there's a foul on Radford. A little too physical with the tackle. But they've had opportunities to go other places. And when you make that conscious decision not to, it says a lot. And for Coach Dyer, it has to be extra special since he founded the program at Longwood. You don't envy the next person who's going to step in to replace either one of these two gentlemen. Here's a playback, and that'll be Levish with a short goal kick. Shots in favor of Radford right now, two to one. Early moments here from Cup Stadium. Sarabi with his arms crossed. Felt during our brief conversation, a little sense of urgency here tonight. He needs his team to get off to a, a good start. And now we have a stoppage here on the field. I don't know if we have a sideline issue or not, but clock was stopped momentarily. Now we're back underway. You mentioned the standings and everybody's kind of bunched up there at the top. Campbell, the only unbeaten squad. High point not out of this thing. So really, you have six squads that are sitting there. Longwood knows if they can get a win tonight, then they're just one game behind Radford in the loss column. And they would have the head-to-head. -head. So still enough conference schedule to play to where things can sort themselves out. Here's Swain trying to get by. Nice stop to the right, then to the left. And then a tackle from Longwood. O'Donnell in the middle, going to play it over on the far side. Lynch with a quick turn. You know, Cat Paris, she got decked there, and the ball's played out. The defending Big South Freshman of the Year, what a just amazing inaugural season she had as a freshman. She got off to a slower start scoring goals this year. You know, she kind of become the focal point of last year's team as she continued to get chances and continued to convert. And this year, you could tell, she had a little trouble adjusting at first. She was being like that right there. She was being played very physically. And teams were doing their best to make sure she didn't have free run. But now you slowly see that her goal scoring capability is starting to rise to the top as she's just one behind Kiernos for the team lead. She's working here on the right side and she tried to center that one forward, but it was deflected out. 
but it will result into the first corner kick of the night for the Highlanders, who average over seven per contest. You mentioned 101 of them on the season for Radford. So let's see if they can make something happen here. O'Donnell will tee it up across the way. This is also where you feel the loss of Kiernos because Alexis is the one who sends in the corners. Straight, fairly straight, had a little late bend to it. Radford trying now to work on the secondary bounces here, but they won't get a clean shot. Swain on the near side. And offside the call. So not only is Kiernos your leading scorer, She's a provider of energy out on the pitch, and she's also your table setter on those corners. So maybe that adds to a little bit of the uh, urgency from Ben Sarabi here tonight, right? But as is the case with his teams, I mean, <laughs> so many good players have come through here and get better under his coaching. but. Even when you have a loss like that, you never feel like it's an enormous loss, if that makes sense, because he always has somebody ready to step up and prepare the play. He's always utilized freshmen. Now, of course, freshmen and portal players, first-year players in the program, as well as any coach that's been in the Big South. Throw in across the way from the Lancers. Not much yet. Both goalies have been untested thus far as we're under the 29 minute mark. And we'll have a play the other way. Radford's gonna have a goal kick here. Radford program back in 1981. Got going, just talking to our most recent Women's Soccer Hall of Fame inductee at our Hall of Fame banquet a couple of weeks ago, Helen Negri was talking about the way it was then and the way it is now. She still supports the program in many ways. But you have Ben Sarabi with 279 wins, Coach Dyer with 262 wins. I'm not good at math, but that's over 500 wins between the two coaches. There's a carom at midfield as the Highlanders trying to create a little bit more consistent possession. They haven't necessarily had that as this one's sent away by short. Lots of long balls without any destination, if you will, for Radford so far. Now a throw in across the way from Brooke Bonner. Where's number eight in the road, Navy Blue? A lot of excitement created around that Longwood campus last year when their basketball team went on their amazing run under Griff Aldridge and won the Big South Tournament, went to the NCAA. You see Coach Dyer bundled up. He understands that weak day evening games in the Big South, especially here in Radford, can get very chilly. I mean, a four o'clock start would have been just marvelous today. Throw in for Selena Lynch and the Highlanders across the way. Just three total shots, two taken by Radford. Longwood on top, two to one in corners, but really that's, that's all we have so far. But the Longwood basketball team gonna be picked to repeat in the league this year. Basketball season just three and a half weeks away. We'll be tipping it off in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at Marquette in no time. Here's a takeaway and it's Swain in three on three. Amy left side centering pass. And you could tell right there the idea from Paige Olson was to send it back to Amy. And she kicked it a little too deep. She kind of hung her shoulders a little bit, but that's the kind of playmaker that Amy Swain has evolved into. And 
really, it started early last year. And she took over when Kat was trying to feel her way through. She took over, had two goals immediately, then got it up to four. She's also added five assists. I mean, she's tied with Kiernos with 13 points. So she's a weapon for Radford on that offensive end. And we're going to have a throw in here. Swain looking for Cat. The sophomore plays it ahead. This is what they wanted a moment ago. Now here's Olsen. She wants to dance around her defender. Takes it to the corner of the rectangle to Amy. Same pairing as a moment ago. Olsen into Cat. She'll turn, deflects off a Longwood defender, and it'll just be cleared out of there. Get it out of the box, right? Pretty good play there by Longwood. Cat never could really get an extension on that. And Amy will throw it in here near side. Here's Cat Pears with her back to the defender. And boy, she likes to maneuver from that spot. So quick. And very strong, Cat Pears. There's a nice play here on the near side by Kayla Edwards. Kayla has really blossomed this year on that back line for Radford. There's a turnover, though, uncharacteristic. And a takeaway by the Lancers is now dribbling. Dinger forward. But once they had the ball on the other side of the oval, they really couldn't do a whole lot. Radford able to converge and get a steal as we're under 24 minutes. Here's Dinger left side. Trying to get through. She'll get it back. Pass here on the right side. Lancer's not firing a shot away yet. Taking a lot of time to dribble. You're going to have it taken away, and that's what the Highlanders, really one of the many things they excel in under Ben Sarabi. You usually have to make a quick decision to go ahead and strike because their back line so, so proficient at taking it away. And you see that this will be a goal play here. Trinity Varis, again, getting the start. She's going to relinquish here to Helena Wilson. Lena has an extremely strong leg on these goal kicks. She'll get this out to midfield. I don't think the wind's going to hold it up. And there it goes. It's going to bounce. It, I think it would have hit the midfield line if it hadn't been headed out first. Nothing doing so far. Radford with four shots to Longwood's one, and we still have goose eggs on the score for Longwood. That's probably pretty good, right? They fell behind. Coach Dyer, I gave you his quote. Can't do that. It's like getting behind the sticks in a American football game. Third and long yardage. Get down one nothing on the road, especially. It's tough. But Longwood's been able to keep Radford from having any serious opportunities. Now another goal play here for the Highlanders. Highlanders will be right back here on Saturday. We have a doubleheader for you. The men at four. And the men, by the way, have put together two consecutive wins. Got a one-nothing victory on Saturday against Upstate. That'll be the four o'clock game. And then the seven o'clock game will be the women's team. Campbell, by the way, will be the men's opponent. Last time they will come to Cup Stadium because they're leaving the league after the 2023 academic and athletic calendar. Speaking of leaving the league, it was officially announced yesterday. and We had him on the program this morning on my radio show. Big Dog Sports Talk, heard weekdays from 6 to 9 here in the New River Valley and online worldwide. Uh, Kyle Kalander, the Big South Commissioner, announced his retirement at the end of the fiscal year. 27 years as the commissioner, and he has really brought the Big South to a place that a lot of people probably didn't envision it would be here in 2022. He will be greatly missed. Great conversation this morning. 
Said he's going to miss just traveling to the schools, right? Just visiting and hanging out with coaches and talking to student athletes. There's a foul from behind on the tackle. Elena Wilson, a little physical on the push, and this will be a free kick. There you see bouncing up, however, was Kylie Cox for the Lancers. And one of the things that Kyle was really in on, and people might not know this, but when the digital age was going to be upon us for the long term with the creation of the internet, that thing that happened shortly after, shortly before Kyle took over, then streaming broadcasts were something that the Big Ten decided to do. And they created their own TV network, the Big Ten Network, with its own streaming service. And the Big South was the second conference. Back in the day, it was the Big South Network. So you had the Big Ten and the Big South as the only two conferences in the nation that were streaming events. Didn't last long because everybody else caught up. And he also was the one who let everybody else in the league know how important it was to create this relationship with ESPN and ESPN Plus in the Big South. Here's a shot by Swain that didn't get through and a big collision. Everybody's okay. And now deflection out for the Lancers. Dinger over on the other side. Plays it to the middle. But again, one too many passes. Although they do maintain possession. It's just not going to work. Lily Short. Longwood will figure out here soon that when you turn and have some space and you're close to the box, you better go ahead and just strike one in there. Here's Selena Lynch. Got two players over there she's playing, trying to play keep away from. She lost possession momentarily. Nice ball that was sent in and played out by Edwards. And the Big South today continues to be very prominent, which is why you're watching and listening. I have the opportunity to anyway here tonight. From Cup Stadium and to get all the sports involved. All the different men's and women's teams. This will be a throw in here on the near side for the Highlanders. We're under 18 minutes and it has been really all the action has been near midfield and just outside the rectangles. There's a play in by Edwards for Radford. Caitlin O'Donnell over to Helena. Talk to Helena's parents at one of the earlier home games. They always watch and listen. So hello to the Wilson family if you're tuned in. Here's a ball that's going to carry him over to Amy. Swain has it on her right foot to O'Donnell. She's going to pop this one in there, but that's an easy goal play that time from Levish. And she's got the kind of the maze goalie attire on with the black socks over there on the other side for Radford. Varis going with the bright lemon limish Seattle Seahawk version of goalie gear. Here's Swain working hard here near side. And a play out. Pretty good pressure applied here on the near side by Catherine Frost from Longwood. Sydney Robertson will play this in. No score here from Radford. And really, we talked about the goalies not having a lot of activity. Our officials have just kind of let this one play out. It's been fairly cleanly played, very few fouls. No cards, no threats of cards. Longwood getting a little closer here on this end with the throw in, and where did that one go? That's going to be a goal kick. Wasn't sure for a second if that may have gone off of Selena Lynch, but indeed it went off of the Lancers. 
Here's Wilson again. She'll show off that strong leg. I'm going to say she's going to get this one about a foot over the center line. Let's play guess how long Helena's goal kick will go. Uh, nope. That one got a little more air under. We've got a couple subs coming in for Rad for the next opportunity. Longwood with a takeaway as we approach the 15-minute mark. Look how quick. See, right there it was. Selena Lynch did not give Juhas any time at all, really, to focus on anything. A foul, and now we have a third Radford player about to check in. And Sarabi likes to do this. He'll pick out some spots and bring in some fresh legs. Wilson once again. This will about be in front of the rectangle. There's more of the line drive kick that powers its way over the center line. Oh my goodness, and there's our first major collision and we have a player down and it was inadvertent and I just mentioned no cards and there will come a yellow card and boy, it's nice to see Alex Dinger pop up. That was two players going for the ball at the same spot. I believe, was it Edwards? Yeah, let's see that one more time here. I'm so glad to see that Dinger is okay first and foremost. That was a, a nasty play and there it was. Nope, it was Avery Howe, 27, and you see Avery, she got in there and again, both players were there. And Here's a chance for Longwood with the free kick. This is a good spot to have one. Although this one was very short and didn't carry its way into the crowd of Navy Blue. So the first card of the evening goes against Radford. Oh, here's a giveaway. Dangerous header that went backwards for the Highlanders. Now it's played out across the way and it'll be a throw in for Longwood. This will be Savannah Knoll. One of their two goal scorers of the year so far. And oh my goodness, the gamble fails miserably for Varis and it's headed right by her. Oh, mistake by the backup goalkeeper. She kind of nonchalanted it out there, and I believe I just mentioned Noel, and I think she got it to Juhas. We'll have to see. I want to make sure we get the goal score correct. But Varis came out. We'll see it here momentarily, and it's one nothing Longwood. And boy, this is exactly what Coach Dyer wanted. After falling behind on Saturday, they come out here and get a one nothing lead on the road. And it was a gift, right? Watch Vera, she's gonna come out and there's the header. And it looked like Catherine Frost. Yes, it was Catherine Frost, 22 and not just two. I saw a two, but so Frost has the first goal. or forced, I'm sorry, Catherine forced. Her third of the season, she now leads the team. So my apologies to Catherine. So now let's see how Radford responds here. Catherine forced with her third of the season. Radford's got it back in scoring position. It's played up high in the air. A couple players hit the deck and ball will go the other way. Well, sometimes you'll see a goalie come out to play a ball, and then the fact that Forrest was able to avoid any contact with Varis was very impressive, and that was a line drive header that goes right in. So Longwood now riding some momentum on top, one nothing. 12 and a half minutes to go in the half. That'll warm up the Longwood sideline. So how will Radford respond? Just ups the confidence level on everyone wearing the navy blue uniform, right? Because then it becomes a situation where, okay, now we're up a goal. Let's go get another one. 
There's Dinger playing it back. Islander Swain, the first one to get there. And the deflection off of the Lancers. Only two shots for Longwood, but the header by Forst, and it's 1-0. Radford would like to get the equalizer before the intermission. This is going to, the pressure applied there forces a pickup from Levish. Ball play to the near side. And Juhas keeps it in play, sending it down toward the Radford net. And we weren't told of anything, uh, by the way, with Jordan Phillips. She may have just been getting a night off. Didn't hear about any issues with her as Highlanders with a quick turn. Lunderman on the right side. Chance here perhaps for Radford. There's a nice pass in. Lunderman at the oval. Took a little too long and Longwood converged. Radford trying to apply the pressure here. Here's June Stevens, the Richmond transfer. She has been so good. And a throw in here for Radford. One thing for Longwood, they've got this one nothing lead, so you know that the only thing on their mind now is to make sure they don't give up one here. Here's a good ball that was sent across. Good idea, but it just carried on through and out of play. Really good idea that time from Paige Olsen, the freshman. Catherine Forrest with the goal. Again, her third of the season. The Lancers lead 1-0. Forrest from Bristow, Virginia, Brentsville High School. Here's Wilson. Centering pass, Edwards. But nothing else on that one for Radford. Hugh Haas with the play here on the near side, trying to hit Dinger and throw in here on the near side. It was a substitution for Longwood. Robertson will have to wait. Juhas going to head out. And checking in for Longwood is Carly Minson. Minson is a freshman from Virginia Beach. Eight twenty in the half. One nil. Longwood. Good run here by Olsen. She's been extremely active here on this near sideline, but that pass was short-footed and an easy takeaway for Robertson. Radford just hanging around out here, right? Just kind of keeping the ball within distance. Edward's going to pop that one up. That's a Interesting little shot, a little short foot. She kind of short hopped it from her toe. Got that bounce, and for a second there, looked like it could have been an issue for Levish, but she made the catch. Ball down here for Radford, forcing Longwood to chase the full length. There's a misplay a little bit by Levish. Radford unable to take advantage. Seven minutes to go. 
Wilson in the middle from right to left. Going to play it here to Stevens. June's got quickness from there. Trying to get around the defender, and it's played out. And the Highlanders are going to have another corner. Let's see if it's going to be a different player this time for Radford taking the kick here on the near side. It will be. Ularby going to tow this one up for Radford. Chance here for the Highlanders. Everybody bunched up in the net. Low line drive, it's through. It's being kicked out. And oh my goodness, for a second there, they had the goalie out of her crease and on the ground. Another collision there. And the Lancers give it away again. Short sends it in and over. But you know, I like that. Take that one step and just send it toward the net, right? Don't play around with it. And Elitis out there now for Radford here in the final five and a half. Well, of course, Longwood would love to have an opportunity to try to create another scoring chance. But right now, their main thing is let's not Let's not give up our one goal advantage. And another corner here for Radford. We'll switch sides from the near to the far. Ularby once again. The last one was very dangerous. They had everybody bunched up in the goal. This time everybody's outside the box. Save one player in the middle in front of Levish. Line drive. Caroms away. Follow kick. And Longwood just sending it down and out and out of bounds, actually, right near the scorer's table. A little sense of urgency here from Lynch. Selena. Throwing it in, she hustled to get that soccer ball. Ever since the goal, it seems like the ball's been down here on the Longwood end. Nice play over. Longwood just trying to create a little possession of their own here. Nothing else. It would milk some time. Instead, another giveaway. And here's June Stevens trying to work her way around a defender. She will. And then it's poked away by the Lancers. Smart play there by Gualiano. There's a dangerous ball. And the goalie came out of her crease. So. Contact can be made. She's out of her safety zone there. And gutsy play there by Levish. And Louderman got in there and it was almost a catastrophe, much like it was a moment ago for Radford on the Longwood goal. Under three minutes. Here in the half. Lunderman here on the near side for Radford. Ashley sends it over to Stevens. June, line drive, headed away. June gets it right back. Trying to be a fly in the ointment here. Here's Wilson off of her two-goal game on Saturday. Crossing in. Elena, she's got a lot of ball skills. Now going to play it over toward the corner. Swain toe taps it forward to Lily Short. 
You see Longwood, they're just kind of laying back here. They don't want to give up an advantage in the middle, packing some players in there. Lunderman to Swain. Amy's going to send it in right on goal, but right into the waiting arms of Levish. You see the difference in mindset. Highlanders turning and getting strikes in as quickly as they can. They don't waste a lot of time dribbling around. Longwood's kind of hurt themselves on a couple of possessions where they were trying to get a little closer or find a player with a better angle, and they look down, and the ball's no longer in their possession. Here's a collision and another giveaway. Pandelini's down. Larby was in, and it was taken away, and she's a little frustrated. We approach one minute to go in this half. You'll hear the one-minute call here from our PA announcer right now. Islanders trying to get the ball in here. They see the clock is winding down here in the half. Wilson, and she's going to create another corner, yet another one for Radford. This will be their fourth of this opening half. Ularby looking in. They've got time here, 35 seconds. Now they're going to put everybody bunched up again right near the goalkeeper. Ball just kept going out. May have been tapped by Levish over to the corner. And another throw in by Radford. The 10 second countdown's coming now. Doesn't look like Radford's going to be able to get an attack. Can they get a last second shot off? They kind of do a little bit with Edwards, but it goes over the net. And that will end the half. And for the Longwood Lancers, even though Radford really toward the second 25 minutes of that first half, really dominated possession, but it is a goal that is scored by Longwood. one nothing. Lancers on top. It's halftime here from Radford here on ESPN+. Plus. Responded pretty well once Ben Sarabi puts a little charge into them. And we are underway. Let's see if Radford can apply some early pressure. We have to wait and see how this goes for them is one nothing lead. Not necessarily something that you're very comfortable with, but it's better than being on the short side of it. And my eye has spied Alexis Kiernos. Interesting. Alexis is starting the second half for Radford. You can see her walking right in the middle of the field down here next to the oval, wearing the number 21. And Alexis Kiernos did not play in the first half. Maybe some precaution coming out of her collision over the weekend at Asheville, but she is starting this second half. And she just adds a different dimension for the Highlanders as you see Edwards about to play it in. So we'll keep an eye on that. Is Kiernos leading the team with five goals this season? And we're already going to have a corner kick for Radford. That was Cat Paris just using her strength. And now you're going to see Alexis in her usual spot running over to set up this corner kick. So this changes the entire complexion of this contest. Glad to see, first of all, she's okay. So it tells you that she's not necessarily injured, but Coach Robbie is wanting to give her a little bit of time. So they gave her the first half off, her first corner. That had pretty good been to it, got high in the air. Radford keeping it around. Here's a follow-up shot just over. I think that was O'Donnell. Oh, my goodness. She had a clear lane. And pressure immediately from Radford. Shot number eight. You see Caitlin. Pretty good effort right there. Long one 
unable to keep that one from playing out across the way. Coach Sarabi, you know, I've asked him in the past if his team's behind or he doesn't feel like they've played well. And it's not necessarily that Radford hasn't played well. They just had a, uh, a decision that didn't work out for them in goal and a better pass that connected with the striker and the striker got it in on the header. But another foul crossed the way against Longwood. So now here's a chance for Radford with a free kick here. And he says sometimes, you know, he'll remind them what they need to do. And we're going to have a card going out here, too, I think. No, no card. Conversation going on, though. And he says sometimes he just lets them talk amongst themselves, let them figure it out. We'll have to only guess what approach he took. Kier knows we'll get some good bend on this. She does. And here's a chance. Ball pops up. Raptor trying to keep it in, but Longwood going to send it out. Selena Lynch going to play it forward. One nothing. Line drive that was sent in and caught in the air. That was Olsen. And Levish with the nice play. Eight shots to two in Radford's favor. Selena Lynch looking for some space here on the near side. Ball that's played down. Longwood back to greet it first as now they try to send it back the other way. I don't think the ball's been across midfield until right now in the second half. There's a play here on the near side. Cat Paris. Collision and nothing called there. Cat went down a little bit late. Here's Lynch playing it in the middle to Wilson. Wilson's shot, unable to get through. Pretty good deflection there. Nice combo play by the Lancers' defense. Palomar was the one who deflected that last one. Cat Paris got to be a little frustrated. She hasn't really had much of a run tonight. There's O'Donnell trying to drive through. Nice ball sent in, and it's pushed away. That thing just kept on going, and pretty good response by Levish. Radford just has applied constant pressure out of the halftime break. And another corner kick here for Radford. You'd have to think here pretty soon. You keep knocking on the door, right? Radford men have won their third straight, by the way. They've knocked off Longwood. So that game down in Farmville, and the men win it two to one. Here's a good ball in the corner, but Levish was there, makes the pickup. So the Radford men. Well, that looked like a whiff by Dinger, but they said there was a push and a foul on Radford from behind. See that again. Maybe she got tripped up from behind. From her vantage point, it was tough to tell. But how about Chris Barrett and the Radford men's team? Three straight wins. The Longwoods women trying to even the Wednesday night series uh, between the two schools. Here's 
Here's Cat Paris. Boy, she's just got to be aching to get free, huh? Once again, Radford immediately with the quick turn and getting the ball down toward the Longwood goal. Lily Short, who had a team high three shots in the first half. And that ball was played off of Radford. Pretty good play across the way right from the Longwood bench. Longwood feeling the pressure. One nothing, they lead here. Here's Lynch. Shots are at eight to two. But one of Longwood's two found the back of the net. Beautiful header by Forrest, Catherine Forrest. But Radford just continuing to keep the back line on its heels here for Longwood in the second half. O'Donnell with a nice ball. That was right off the top of the ground, kind of stayed consistent where it was, about a foot off the ground the whole way in to Levish, who made a nice, look like a infielder in a baseball game, getting down to make sure she corralled that one. Good ball across the pitch here to Olsen. Page has got speed. She wanted to start and then stop and go by her defender. Now she just sends one in the middle. Good idea, right? You never know who might be there. And it'll be a push and a foul. Yep. Arms extended that time from Cox. Quick free kick for Radford. Stevens is in, centers it across the middle. Navy Blue there first. Boy, the Highlanders just continuing to creep closer and closer, it feels like. Inger with the run on the other side for Longwood. Nice short ball this way. The Lancers playing it short, now trying to go long. Noel plays it in, and it'll be deflected out by Radford. So for Lily, for the first time here in the second half, the Lancers are going to be down the Radford end. Another deflected ball out against the Highlanders. One thing about it, you have two coaches who have nearly 60 years combined at their respective schools. They've seen absolutely everything there is to see out here. And a substitution for Longwood across the way. I believe that's 28. Yeah, it is. Emma Jones from Northside High School in Roanoke. Northside Viking. Wilson with another goal kick. Elena from left to right. Didn't get much height on that one at all. Ball headed out by Radford. Under 33 minutes. Radford trying to complete the sweep of the Longwood programs, but some work to do here on the men's side. Or on the women's side. The men took care of business. Men got it done, two to one. 
Shots are at nine to two. This is the first extended possession for Longwood. In the Radford end in the second half. And they turn it over there. Well, with the one nothing lead, how does the Lancers play this, right? Just is Coach Dyer, does he kind of pack it in a little bit? You don't want to take away that aggressive offensive edge, but I wonder if that might be going through their mind. We'll see how they play it out here. They've not had much possession at all. And they're going to point here in Radford's direction. A little help there from the Radford sideline. Everybody pointing toward the Longwood goal. Edwards again. Cat Paris trying to get free. And we have a foul. Free kick for the Lancers. Get a little physical now. See, Cat, I mentioned. Might be getting a little frustrated. She hasn't had much free run whatsoever here tonight. And she's been dealing with that. I talked about that in the open. Here's Kiernos, who sat out the first half. Lynch taps it ahead, and now Cat. Facing forward. Nice pass in the middle to O'Donnell. O'Donnell's had a couple of good strikes here in the second half. Here's Stevens to Paris. Ball deflected out momentarily. Bradford, though, they regroup and reform quickly. That's been the case here in the second half. Almost 15 minutes of Radford possession. Wilson right in the middle of the circle. It just feels like sooner or later, Radford's going to get a direct shot here. It's played out once again by the Lancers. They are definitely in chase mode right now, even though they lead this thing 1-0. The Highlanders have been just playing in a frenzy to start out this second half. So I think whatever Coach Sarabi said to his squad, the message has definitely been received. Cat Paris. Nice play by Cat. And that ball kind of trickles out to whom? It's going to go the other way. Yeah, it was trying to state her case there with the goal kick, but it'll be Levish. Just under 30 minutes to go, and Longwood still maintaining that one nothing lead here at Cup Stadium. Getting here to the middle of October, shorter days, cold nights. We've had some frost here in the New River Valley. Field though looks still pretty darn green to me for this late in the year. We've had a lot of rain over the summer, really the early fall. Misplay by Radford forces a turnover, and this ball will be sent in, but not really a play at all to be made by Varis. Trinity Varis going to play this one out, or will it be Helena? It'll be Wilson. Jordan Phillips did not get the start tonight. Kiernos did not get the start tonight for Radford. Foul from behind there. That was the goal scorer forced against Alexis Kiernos. Again, had a collision on Saturday. So she's trying to 
avoid any of that type of activity here. Wilson on the free kick. You see the wind rippling her jersey. It's starting to sweep around here a little bit. And rain's supposed to happen overnight. You can feel the air cooling off substantially now. Now the Lancers trying to get a run here. And a push from behind, and we're going to have a foul. That was Edwards running straight on here with Mentioned the Northside product who checked in a moment ago for Longwood. That was Emma Jones. Free kick here for the Lancers. So a dangerous ball here after the, uh, the foul, the push. Ball in the air, headed forward, but an easy two hopper that time for Varis. So not a bad opportunity, just not, not enough on that one. And it's the first shot of the second half for Longwood. And it'll be a Radford play here on the sideline. Plenty of time to go. We're still at 26 minutes. And we have seen this Radford team really just step it up on several fronts here. Will it be enough to get the equalizer and beyond? We'll find out. Here's Olsen. He's got Karras, Kat Paris in the middle. But that shot was deflected. Kat couldn't get it through. Good recovery by Lidecker. She got in there and got a foot on that one. Now Stevens will force a pickup by Levish here. and the Highlanders battling here. The Commonwealth foes. Here's a run in. Will they get a shot away? Slow roller from Juhas. Not what she was looking for. Shots are at 10 to 4 in Radford's favor. Score is in Longwood's favor. 1-0. Trying to break it free there for a moment. You know, I haven't mentioned it enough, but the back line for Longwood's been really good tonight. They haven't made a lot of, you know, fancy plays or anything like that, but they have really been solid back there. That back four, that wall for the Lancers. They've allowed 10 shots, but they've been back there and done a pretty good job, especially against. Cat, Cat will turn that one in, and there's one that was just sent in because I think she's just not had that opportunity. Another substitution here for Longwood. Julia Gill checking in from Brunswick, New Jersey, and Juhas will head on over to the sideline. Lynch over here to Olsen. Boy, Paige has been involved with so many initial attacks. You'd like to see her get free and get one on goal if you're a Radford fan. Good run back by Wilson. Dangerous ball. It's deflected out and outside going to be the call. Boy, for a moment there, it looked like the Lancers were in business, unable to stay on side. Wilson again in the front of the box will send this forward. Throw in by Olsen. And forced with a takeaway. Yeah, you know, they're just sending balls down and they're hoping somebody in a blue jersey can 
out running. Here's a misplay on the goal kick, and Radford fortunate that they were not in a position to have a one-on-one -on -one with the goalie there. A little short play that time. Longwood with the quick turn forward and another substitution. Coach Dyer getting some fresh legs in here. Kylie Cox back out. So they're substituting quite frequently here in the second half. Foul going to be called on Jones, the north side Viking. Under 22 minutes to go, one nothing Lancers. We'll have a doubleheader for you on Saturday. The men who have won three in a row have Campbell at four, and then the women, seven o'clock. And another foul called against Longwood. Wasn't sure what that whistle was all about right there. And the women will come your way at 7 o'clock. And that'll be against the Bucks of Charleston Southern. And the Bucks are having a good Big South season as well, 3-1-1. One one. This result tonight is big in those standings for those three teams that are tied with that 3-1-1 one one record. Lancers trying to get a shot in here. Olsen with a nice recovery. When the night began, it was upstate at 4 and 1. Then you had Campbell 3 0 and 2. Radford, Gardner Webb, Charleston Southern 3 1 and 1. Then you have High Point 2 and 2. 2 2 and 1, actually. So the Lancers now with a corner. They haven't had many of these tonight. Radford leading in that category six to three. Savannah Knoll going to send it in. Sent up high in the air, now headed forward and out. We're under 20 minutes now. And now it's starting to get a little bit of a situation where the clock starts to be something you pay attention to, right? On both sides. <laughs> Talked about Longwood. They haven't scored very many goals this year. They got one in the first half. Radford at 27 goals. Still with a goose egg for now. Caitlin O'Donnell, she has been very active tonight. Stevens playing it forward for Radford, the Richmond transfer. And nobody home over in the corner. I think June thought someone was going to break to that corner. And it'll be a throw in for the Lancers. So we had the men go to Farmville and get a win. And the Longwood women trying to return the favor here on the road, leading at one nothing. That ball is going to be picked off easily by Lynch. Maybe this will start a charge for Radford. So far tonight, Longwood has just been in the Radford way enough, you know? Even though Radford has 11 shots, nothing really, to be honest, that taxing for Levish. Now some substitutions. Amy Swain going to check in. And Cat Paris going to have a seat. O'Donnell is out. Is that Katie Oliver checked in? So Swain and Oliver in. As we're now under 18 minutes. We've got some speed out there now between Amy and Katie O. Not a 
lot's been played on this side of the field in the second half. But so far, Radford still sitting there with a goose egg. I just realized, I don't, I don't know if I've, ever, if I've ever actually seen a goose egg. I mean, I know it looks like a zero because they keep saying, you know, over all the many decades of sports, the goose egg. I grew up on a farm, but we didn't have any geese. I guess there's a large call for geese farming. Here's a takeaway by Radford. Oh, you saw KDO. She had an idea to take that one and go running with it. Here's Kiernos playing it over. Olsen and Kiernos. Wilson checks around, nobody around her, so she sends it down. Boy, that's a good ball over to Stevens on the far left side. June trying to cross over, dribble around the defender. She's going to send this one across the middle. No, she sent it in toward the goal, and it was Levish guessing right and covering up that corner. 16 minutes to go. Longwood maintaining their 1-0 lead. And a late, late whistle coming on that collision. I mean, the players had already bounced up and the ball had been played backward. So now here comes, this is going to be a very, very important free kick here. Longwood's going to have a good shot here. Up one nothing. Gualiano going to send this one forward. Ball deflected out. And the follow-up kick. No threat that time for Trinity Veras. 15 minutes to go here from Cup. And Radford still on the short end of a 1-0 score. A couple Radford players collided a turnover here. They are in and onside, and the shot is in, but gobbled up nicely that time by Radford. Oh, my goodness, and Kiernos on the ground, slow and getting up. I'm sure she's okay. I think she's all right, watching her out there. That was Emma Jones, and just a couple Radford players kind of ran into one another. Now another turnover. Good idea here on this ball, but that back line there, I'll tell you what, Radford not going to allow too much to go through. Physicality starting to pick up here in the final 15 minutes. Highlanders starting to feel that urgency full throttle. Jones with a takeaway. Nothing on that shot. Edwards wouldn't allow it. Quick rollout here. Radford understanding now that time is getting shorter and shorter. Here's KDO. When healthy, maybe the fastest player on any soccer field. Wilson over on the right side, sizing it up, playing it forward. Swain cuts inside the defender, goes down, trying to draw the whistle, and no call. Probably a pretty good no call. That was a nice idea, though, by Amy. Boy, she cut on a dime in front of the defensive player. Couldn't quite get a shot, and then tried to draw the call. It's been a good battle over here between Noel and Swain. Another ball played forward. Highlanders back to get it. Kennedy Dunnings on the near side. You know, looking back, Kennedy did not play in that first half as well. There's a ball that's sent down. Olsen battling. Stevens and Olsen, far corner. 12.25 to go from Cup Stadium. 
Noel with the header out. Good ball that was sent in that time. As Radford continues just to keep pressuring the Lancers. But every time the Lancers have an answer. Or just enough of an answer, right? With a deflection, with a little bit of a takeaway, with a double team, whatever it might be. Dunnings, one of the best in the conference. Eleven and a half minutes to go here from Cup. Substitutions now. Alex Dinger checking back in, so now she's got fresh legs. She was so active in the first half. Kiernos with speed. Quick takeaway and turn. Nice pass ahead. They couldn't find a connector. That's been the thing. Radford hasn't been able to have enough connecting passes. They've controlled possession, but they can't get two to three taps and a connection and get momentum towards a good shot. Slowly but surely, Longwood up on the scoreboard has reduced the what has been a large deficit in shots tonight. It's now 11 to seven in Radford's favor. Ten and a half minutes to go. In Longwood, now they're going to be, I guess you could say, the most subtle time wasters <laughs> right? They're not going to be in any hurry to do anything now that we're under 10 minutes. Bradford and Longwood. These in-state battles, I tell you, they are different. And Sarabi said as much to me in the pregame. I go back to that conversation. Still time, though, for Radford. Still feels like that they're ready to break one open, doesn't it? Here's KDO. Couldn't quite handle the return pass. And Dunnings is going to play this back to Trinity. Wood will take that. They don't mind that at all. And Olsen couldn't quite locate that pass. She looked left and it was already over her right shoulder out of bounds. More substitutions for Longwood. Kylie Toussaint. Sophomore from Riverside, California. There are a lot of California kids in the Big South. A whole lot. Now, Olsen gets the deflection. Saves it. Swain over on the right side. And before she could tow it up, it's taken away. Oh, that was a terrific play here on the near side, and I believe that was Noel. Savannah Noel has been outstanding. And she's going to draw a foul. 7.53 on the clock. And a free kick here for Longwood. Again, they're not going to be in too much of a hurry. You know, Savannah Noel is, Guagliano is going to take this. She has been really, really good tonight. Taking balls away as a midfielder. She's just kind of helping out back there. She got credit for the 
one of the two players who got credit for the assist on the Longwood goal as well. Along with Dinger on the goal that's holding up right now from Catherine Forst, her third of the season. Here's Helena Wilson for Radford, right in the middle. Islanders being pushed to the brink. Here's a long pass downward. Swain is onside. Here we go. Tap ahead. Katie Oliver gets hit pretty hard. Ball still being played and out, and Radford's going to create a corner kick here late. Kiernos demanding the soccer ball. Catherine Force goal came into the 31.07 mark of the first half. Kiernos with six and a half minutes to go. Corner kick number seven for Radford. Will this be the one that draws them even? Not much on it. Line drive was headed out. Dunnings with the follow up in, sending it toward a lot of white jerseys. But again, Longwood with just somebody in the way, right, to clear it out. Six minutes to go. And the clock stops at 5.54. And we have a cramp, I believe, down here for Radford. I wondered why the clock was stopped. Down here in front of the Radford goal, I think that's Kayla Edwards. It's like kind of night, isn't it? Kind of feels like it. Yep, Kayla's okay, I think. She's running off though a little gingerly. She's gonna head out of here. So Donald's back in. Edward's still grabbing that leg, so hope it's just a cramping situation. Here's a quick turn. Radford, Oliver in, sending it toward the middle. Let's pop back out again. Wilson. Near side for Selena Lynch. Swain has it. No in front of her. And again, they're just going to clear it out of there with five and a half minutes. They are definitely now just in defense mode. They're just worried about clearing it out, taking as much time, packing it back and forcing Radford. Five minutes left in regulation. Noel with the throw in here on the near side. Olsen. Looking for Lily Short. Lily, another newcomer, has been so good for Radford. Here's a takeaway. And they're just going to send this back. Again, this is just going to take off seconds at this point. Radford has to reform so far away from the Longwood goal. And they're going to point in the direction of the Lancers here for this throw in. And again, they won't be in any hurry whatsoever. Edward's still stretching out that leg over on the Radford side. Now a goal kick for Radford with four minutes to go. They got a, a little sense of urgency here. Elena Wilson. Going to play this from left to right. One nothing. The force goal has Stood tall. A loss would knock Radford out of this mega tie for third I was talking about. Big South teams having really good years. It's been a very, very competitive league season so far. Lynch over to Swain, Amy. 
Nice pass ahead, but Selena unable to get there, and it's sent away. Here's Katie Oliver, a deflection. And an easy pick up there for Levish. She's been good tonight. Two minutes and 50 seconds to go from Cup. That's a good no call. Two players going for the ball. Piernos won that battle. Oliver plays it back for Swain. Nice back kick. And then Amy kind of lost control of it, trying to play it out. Thought maybe it's going to be a give and go for Oliver. And a goal kick here. Clock will stop at 2.16 as another substitution. We'll stop the clock once you get under five minutes. And forced will re-enter the game. Now with fresh legs. Short ball here. The Longwood Lancers have come on the road and they lead one nothing. After a very frustrating result on Saturday. Now here's a ball that's onside for Juhas. Juhas is in, she sends it across. The Highlander is able to clear it out with a minute 50 to go. Here's a ball sent forward to Swain. Two on two back. Oliver in the middle, going to head it forward. Olsen right in the middle of the pitch here. Minute 35 to go. Swain. Incidental contact there. O'Donnell in the middle now for Radford. She sends one in, but it's... Nowhere near, very high over the crossbar. And now more precious time, gonna run off the clock here against Radford in this comeback attempt. Catherine Forrest at 31.07. In just a moment, you're gonna hear the one minute countdown here. It's desperation and a half now for Radford to say the least. Dunnings needs to get it in here, trying to direct some traffic. And it's just played out again, another time waster. Gualiano, Radford quickly gets it in with 39 seconds. Lancers can't clear it out. O'Donnell plays it forward. Caitlin battling. Olsen over on the far side. 22 seconds to go. And Longwood gonna send it down and now out with 17 seconds. Radford's gonna run out of time. Throw in by Radford with 10. The countdown has begun, five seconds. And the Longwood Lancers have come to Cup Stadium and the first half gold holds up and the Lancers knock off Radford one to nothing to indeed earn a split between the men's and women's programs. We want to thank the crew. Great job as always.